Shalom Yasharala. I just want to share some with everyone concerning the curriculum that's going to be coming forth in California. This is by Glenn Beck. Check it out. You can listen to it. So, Stu, you remember when we talked about the uh, curriculum in California and uh, how there's this, this new uh, ethnic studies curriculum, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what, what, what was your understanding of that? What, what, what was happening in that story? What was the bad part of that story? Uh, um, it seemed like there were several bad parts of the story, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. been, I don't remember exactly the details mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Well, they left out Asians and Jews as, right. you know, yeah. uh, okay, so yeah. <laughs> there's something else that's a little bigger than that, and I want to thank the National Review for uh, tipping us on this. Apparently, for the sake of the state's school children, we have to set the record straight on the uh, blood-soaked worship of ancient deities. In an article from the National Review, the Board of Education in California recently voted unanimously to approve the Ethnic Studies model curriculum for use in all of the state's public schools. <clears throat> this curriculum, the National Review says, is probably the most radical, ideologically loaded educational document ever offered up for public consideration in the free world. Here's why. Students are to be taught that white Christian settlers committed theocide against indigenous tribes when they arrived in the New World by murdering Native American gods and replacing them with the Christian god. According to the curriculum, this replacement ushered in a regime defined by coloniality, dehumanization, and genocide and the explicit erasure, erasure and replacement of holistic uh, indigenous uh, gods and their humanity. But all is not lost, for students are also going to learn that they have the power and the responsibility to build a social order defined by counter-genocide, which will eventually supplant the last vestiges of colonial Christianity and pave the way for, and I'm quoting, regeneration of indigenous, estimistic, uh, and cultural futility, uh, uh, future, I can't, a future that is, is, has the old gods and is culturally in line with what the indigenous people wanted to do. Okay. So the curriculum presents pagan gods of the Aztec Empire as worthy objects of study and veneration. Here's what they are doing. The ethnic studies, the students, will be led by their teachers in the ethnic studies community chant First, students will clap and chant to the god, I don't know, Kezapoloka, uh, whom the Aztecs traditionally worshipped with human sacrifice and cannibalism. They clap and chant, asking him for the power to be warriors for social justice. Then the students chant to the gods, uh, the, to the god uh, Quasicotl, uh, and then some H god and an X god <laughs> seeking healing estimate 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 healing healing of religious doctrines and a revolutionary spirit. Do you have this? So they're chanting, they're clapping, they're doing a community chant directly to these gods asking for a revolutionary spirit and a healing of the culture that lost these gods and a uh, reestablishment 
of that culture and these gods. Now, one of these gods uh, was the deity of war and inspired hundreds of thousands of human sacrifices during the Aztec rule. The chant comes to a climax with the request for liberation, transformation, and decolonization. Then the students shout, Penche Bay, Penche Bay, in the pursuit of critical consciousness. Now, Stu, mm -hmm. before I tell you what these gods did and why they're worthy of praying to here, um, do you remember the uh, book I wrote, uh, The Eye of Moloch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. And remember how crazy that sounded? Mm -hmm. I mean, even I thought that sounded crazy at the time. Except I, it was a fiction yeah. book. Well, it I was remember. a fiction book. <laughs> yes. And it is based on the god of Moloch, which is, uh, you know, the Bohemian Grove. And uh, it's where people went out in the ancient days and they would have promiscuous sex. They would uh, chant and praise uh, the god Moloch, and then they would perform, nine months later, ritual sacrifices of their children. And all of the things that we're doing now, uh, this book uh, laid out in fiction, uh, we're kind of worshipping the Eye of Moloch. We're kind of worshipping that same god without knowing it. Well, here we are knowingly worshiping the Aztec gods. Now, what do you know about the Aztecs, Stu? <laughs> Very little, I would say. Very little. Uh, that's why but, I need to take these classes, apparently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you, are you familiar with their temples and the pyramids and what happened there? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I knew it in high school, I'm sure. It's okay. been a long time, though. So they had, these gods loved human sacrifice. And they would lay out their sacrificial victim on a stone at the top of the god's pyramids. They would then carve out the said victim's heart while he or she was still alive, then roll the body down the side of the pyramid. At the base of the temple, it was then dismembered and disposed of and or eaten. Now, the, the estimate has been historically that they did this to only 80,400 people that were sacrificed, you know, over the course of a four-day celebration. Now, historians say that's ridiculous, 80,000 people. It was only 20,000 people. I think 20,000 is enough to say, mm, that's a little crazy. Now, the other god that they're worshiping is even in a less attractive figure. He really liked the sacrifice of children. And the remains of more than 40 boys and girls were discovered at the excavation site of the Great Pyramid, uh, most bearing the marks of severe and prolonged torture. And um, the, uh, you know, the pictographs that are, you know, the Aztec pictographs show that the uh, children uh, were crying out before being sacrificed uh, because... Well, they were they were they were tortured, um, but the tears of innocent children were pleasing to the god, and so they they did everything they could to make sure their little victims were crying uh, before and throughout the ceremony, so the smoke of the sacrificial fire would carry their tears up to the gods in heaven. Uh, at the moment of death, they needed to be screaming out. And so what they did is uh, first they began with the bones of the children being broken, their hands and feet burned, carvings etched into their flesh while they're still alive, then paraded before everybody in town uh, during a ritual while crying out. Insufficient tears uh, from the children were believed to result in insufficient rains for the crops that year. So no brutality was uh, spared. If somebody was like, you know, hey, I'll give you something to cry about, they kind of meant that. You know, I'm going to give you something to cry about. 
Uh, at the end of it all, the mutilated victims were all burned alive. So, um, that's good stuff. Now, the third god that is being taught and chanted to now in uh, schools in California is thought to be the most powerful god of the Aztec gods. He held sway over darkness, night, sorcery, and witchcraft. He also had the uh, power, you know, within himself to disrupt the, uh, the, uh, the social order. Hmm. And he was, uh, he was the god that they all really feared. He was worshipped with many different forms of sacrifice. One of these involved dressing the victim in a splendid warrior regalia and then tying him to a stake or to a wall. And then they would do battle with him uh, in a, you know, in a mocking sort of way. Uh, because he was tied to a wall, and uh, then after they humiliated and uh, tortured him, uh, they 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 went an extra step in the torture just to entertain the god uh, for as long as the god could be entertained until this person finally died. So those are the ones that the Californians, uh, the teachers union, and uh, those who are putting the curriculum for ethnic studies together, those are the gods that they think really need to be worshipped and brought back uh, in our understanding uh, because that, uh, that whole Christian god uh, was only about oppression. Gang... We are in, we are in biblical-sized trouble. Right now, the, because of COVID, our membership is below 50% for the very first time. Thousands of churches have closed and people are not going back. I truly believe that this COVID uh, plan where they have closed our churches uh, was an evil act. And I think it was intentional to break the back and to break the habit of many, many Christians. We are under attack from the forces of darkness unlike I've ever seen before. This is now past and part of the curriculum in California. And what is it we're talking about? What is it we're worried about today? Because the soul of our nation and the soul of our children is at stake. 